uh, I want to introduce you to Alberta. Uh, Hello, we're Alberta. part of the analytics big data in the cloud conference and I have with me Rob Bell from uh, Bergen, New Jersey, uh, which is on the East Coast, ladies and gentlemen, not near Tennessee and Arkansas. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank and you. What brings you to Alberta? Well, I'm here uh, helping out Parkland County, which is right next to Edmonton. Uh, to take a very f interesting infrastructure they've built. They've built a great wireless tower infrastructure to deliver broadband to places where it's not otherwise going to go uh, and figure out how to turn that into economic value, into social value, into cultural value. Is there a way? Sure, there's a way. There's, a lot, there's plenty of ways. We've been studying this for about 10 years, how communities use broadband and information technology to actually generate economic activity. And so it, it, isn't this just a technology play, put up a bunch of towers, lay down the wire and still figure it out? Sure, it could be, but uh, back in the 1990s, Singapore built a network called Singapore One, and it, was, it made headlines around the world. It was a uh, hybrid fiber coax network that went to every single residence and business in Singapore. And it was great, and the headlines ran on for a few years, and then suddenly it went absolutely silent. Really? And for about four or five years, I kept wondering where it was, and all of a sudden it was back. But what they were talking about was what you can do with it. And one of their brilliant ideas was to have a Miss Broadband competition. A Miss Broadband. Miss Broadband competition. Got my yeah. attention. Well, exactly. Got everybody's attention. Um, so they did the same thing that most people do, which is they build the infrastructure and assume that if you build it, they will come. And the answer is, in our world, not anymore. Because mm -hmm. the applications are not obvious, and you need to approach it with a strategy and understand how people are going to use this. So, why Parkland County? I mean, we've got a, a lot of province, and what brought Parkland County to the surface? Well, Parkland County brought itself to the surface. Parkland County decided that it wasn't satisfied with the status quo. Uh, it wasn't satisfied with leaving its economic destiny in the, in the hands of. of uh, carriers, communications companies, mm -hmm. that would decide for themselves who was going to get service and who wasn't, based upon what was good for their shareholders. Perfectly respectable point of view, but it's leaving a lot of folks out. If you're in the communications business, you naturally want to wire or, or wireless zone where there's lots of subscribers. Mm -hmm. Hard to make money in a place where there's not a lot of subscribers. So Parkland County decided to step up and say, well, we're a county, we're a government, we build infrastructure, we're going to build an infrastructure of wireless towers and invite operators to hang their radios on our towers and deliver service. So it sounds like they recognize cell towers as more of a utility, like a road, than, uh, which is their involvement, instead of simply seeing it as a private sector initiative. Correct. And 80% of the cost of deploying a communications network is the civil works, is digging the trenches, putting up the towers, whatever it may be. And so if you just think about this as a, as a generator for competition, it's very, very hard for a new competitor to come into a, into a market where another carrier has, has got wires in the ground mm -hmm. and have ha has had them there for 100 years. Mm -hmm. But if somebody has taken away 80% of your cost base, right. suddenly there's a competitive alternative. Amazing. It is amazing. So we're using competitive forces to help advance the application, or the, at least the, the option of internet, and then figure out ways to sell it. Exactly. Exactly. Fascinating. Now, what does this mean to the distribution? I mean, this conference is about analytics, it's about big data, it's about knowledge management in many ways. Uh, what does this mean to how a community will function in the future if it's been quasi-isolated? Well, think about what the Internet's for. The Internet is one of the greatest transmitters of knowledge in the history of the world. Uh, just You were here just having a presentation by Cisco about the 50 billion devices they expect to have connected to the network in, I don't know, 2050, I, could, I missed the date. Mm -hmm. um, and they, of course, they love that because they're going to be helping to connect all those devices. Right, right. But the impact on the accumulation of knowledge mm -hmm. is unbelievable. So throughout the history of the world, we've needed to cluster geographically. We've needed to go to the city, city center if we want to participate in that, in whatever the, the contemporary version of that was from the Phoenician scroll on up. Uh, today, this new technology is literally making it possible for, we're already seeing it, for what's, what are called the lone eagles, the, the person whose skills are highly transferable to live wherever he or she wants and make a living. Well, imagine scaling that up to the broader population, mm -hmm. creating more opportunities for people who don't have easily transferable skills to work wherever they want. So they can work on the west end of Parkland County. I got that wrong? No, I got that right, right? The mm -hmm. west end of Parkland County, which is extremely rural, and participate in the economy of Edmonton. So this, this sounds like 
Disneyland or, or La La Land for entrepreneurs. I mean, if I'm an entrepreneur and I am in fact building product around knowledge, it doesn't matter where I live anymore. Uh, my, my team, my product knowledge, my distribution, I, I can be practicing commerce anywhere. In theory, you can. I don't think we know how to do it yet. I mm -hmm. think we still know that the incubator works. If we all sit together in a room, mm -hmm. great things happen. Um, the new CEO of Yahoo decided that what her company needed to do was to bring its people back right. in right. and make them, yeah. you know, make them connect. So we don't have this locked, but it's clearly possible. You see it happening. Uh, one of the things that I was just seeing today was an organization, it's a nonprofit called Green Hectares. Yeah. And their interest is in developing the vitality of the rural economy. Well, they already have 3,000 individual farmers and other mm -hmm. people working in rural industries connected to this network, sharing, essentially creating an incubator virtually. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing model. Yeah. That's an yeah. amazing model. And so I'm, I'm going to be following them very closely. This is phenomenal. Works. Now, uh, it's one thing to be an entrepreneur, it's another one to be an established professional who worked hard and studied to get his certificate and who earned the rights to practice or to have competencies that are unique in a market and for a government to say, well, you, you could be putting the public at risk, so uh, thou shalt do no harm, that's your promise, that's your ethic. Uh, how do they feel? How does the professional feel who says, look it, I had exclusive rights based on I know and you don't. You're a client one step above a slave in Roman times. And I'm the professional. This hierarchy has been around from the middle since the Middle Ages. Sounds to me we've got some changes coming. Oh, we have nothing but changes coming. Uh, the intelligent community movement is mostly about understanding what changes are needed and how to get there. And yeah, we're all going to have to give a little. Uh, if you're used to being 100% in charge of, a, of an economic exchange, every company in the world will tell you that the consumer is now in charge. So and monopolies think... are breaking down. Monopolies are breaking down. Board, borders that have been traditional are melting. Well, and that's what I think that's what analytics does. I think as we gain knowledge, as we see the real patterns of things, increasingly we're unwilling to accept the view of an expert who tells us what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a revolution. That's a that's a far far reaching but, revolution. But, but I mean, this, this could be for some. I'm going to get left behind. Uh, I still have my established trust in those that earned that trust over many years, and now I have someone coming along saying, "No, trust us. We, we, we've got better data." Uh, we have enabled the automation of decision making. Work with us. This is competition. This is a whole new technology can ch challenging the professional relationship. Well, you know, technology changes, but I don't think people change very much. And you said the magic word, trust. Mm -hmm. Sure, the competitor comes along and offers you a better widget. Well, okay, is it real? Right. People are not stupid. Right. They know that it may be real, it might not be real. Mm -hmm. And we, we try it, we get burned, we don't do it again. Mm -hmm. So the fundamental issues of human relationships are going to remain dominant over any possible technology. But that assumes, use. I mean, that model is a free market model. That mm -hmm. model that you've articulated says, I will, if I don't know, I'm going to learn. Mm -hmm. And I make mistakes and I learn, everything is fine, and I don't learn anything at all. It just reinforces my established pattern. Who, who's going to govern the emergence of all these new apps? I mean. You know, a billion connections and a hundred thousand apps every couple of years. I mean, there's a lot of dynamics going on. Who do I trust? Do I trust government? Can government keep up with the rate at which change is coming from technology? Well, you're talking to an American, and as you know, Americans don't trust government at all. But they sure it's invest our, heavily in it. Well, of course we do. It's our it's our disease. Right. Um, it's a great question. The answer is that the intelligent community forum. Our basic mm -hmm. observation, our basic idea, is that. We're in the midst of this unbelievable technology-driven revolution, mm -hmm. and our institutions are not keeping up. Right. So what we're trying to do is to find local examples of communities that have looked at the problem and have labored very hard to get out ahead of it to be the ones who maintain that trust. One of the things that we see over and over again is successful communities build these what we what's called the innovation triangle. You have local business working with local government, work, working with local institutions from universities to hospitals to mm -hmm. nonprofits, mm -hmm. together building the trusted relationships right. that let progress put the so, And we call those networks. And yes. they're diverse. Exactly. Because in the old world you, you hang around with like minded people. You've built a very complex society to simplify it. Uh, I'm just going to hang around with my buddies. Mm -hmm. Whereas in this new world, you, you actually want to hang around with a diverse network. I don't think it's you creative. Yeah. I don't think you want to. If you, I mean, people you still use these technologies to isolate themselves. The, uh -huh. We we 
if I'm we have this if I'm, to categorize ourselves. if I'm if I'm liberal in, in, in the United States I read the New York Times and I watch MSNBC <laughs> and if I'm conservative I read mm -hmm. Lord knows what and I watch Fox News mm -hmm. and it reinforces my prejudices these technologies are all double-edged swords we right. can use them one way yeah. or we can use them another way so ethics is a big part of this trend ethics is an enormous part of it so we, we've put some doubt into what the, the model of governance will be. We've said, well, we'll fall back on the almighty market. But we know there's danger in the market because snake oil sells really well. And mm -hmm. a lot of in, unintended consequences can come of it. And we really don't want to break trust. So I know when I was director of privatization with the Alberta government and advisor to the federal government, I said, in this world we're entering into, you cannot govern the direction of change. But you can govern the rate of change. But you need to be flexible enough to realize this transition is coming but you don't want to lead it as government. You want to follow it. So that therein lies the impatience of some that government is moving fast enough, and in other jurisdictions it moves too fast. Mm -hmm. uh, I can recall the days, and I probably look this old, when the printing press had just arrived, and there were barons wow, that really? did, did not just want the printing press in the market. I didn't realize you brought that kind of legacy well, to we've got discussion. You drink the water around Alberta, you know. There are all amazing <laughs> things that will happen. But, uh, I, I think we're entering a period in history not unlike that, where there are those that want to retain the status quo and the power that went with it, but we have a revolution empowered by analytics and the internet and, and the iPads and the Blackberries that are saying to the individual, this is a consumer revolution. Mm -hmm. We are giving you the capacity to make decisions you never could make before. Now, whether you want to make them or not is another matter, but boy, oh boy, this is a flip from the professional client relationship to one where there is, in fact, decision-making, where market forces do play a role. It's exciting. Well, it's exciting, but I think it's also it's, it's, it's potentially distressing in another way, and that is that one of the things we observe is that as we, get, as we develop these economies that do tremendous things using information technology and communications technology and are incredibly innovative, the risk that we're going to leave a larger portion of our population behind mm -hmm. grows. Mm -hmm. And so, over and over again, we find intelligent communities are ones that look at the issue of digital inclusion. How do I make okay. sure that the minimum number of people in my community are being left behind? So is that a matter of timing? And you're not in a rush to leave behind? Or is there a process to make sure more... No, it's, a pro it's a process. You have, to, you have to go to folks who don't get it, mm -hmm. who are not part of, naturally part of the group, and, yeah. and figure out what it is that they need to step into the group. So do they need... The equipment? Do they need the connection? Do they need the training? Do they need to understand something useful that they can do with this technology? So the magic word here is reinforcing con the concept of community. And with that, exactly. I want to say thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to speak with Keep you. Keep on coming back to Alberta. I hope we're a hot spot that the world will discover. You are. Thank you. Join the conversation next year as more cities become data-driven, become a community partner. Contact us at info at abctech.ca.